Hello, and welcome to part two of the MTT assay video series. In this part, we're going to talk more about the protocol and the details of setting up these assays. So let's get started by talking about the preparation steps. The first thing you'll need to do is prepare your MTT stock solution. This stock solution is made by making a five milligram per milliliter MTT stock in DPBS. So let's talk about the practical ways of how to do this. So for a 10 ml stock solution, you're going to measure out 50 milligrams because it's five milligrams per milliliter. And that is the same thing as 0 0.050 grams of your MTT powder. Then you're going to put this into a 15 ml falcon tube. It's important that it's 15 ml because you're going to make a 10 ml stock. And then you're going to fill up that tube with the DPBS up to 10 ml and mix it well. Vortex it thoroughly, make sure it's really, really well mixed. And then you can wrap that in foil and store it in the four degrees or you can use it immediately. When you make it, the solution should be yellow, so it should look just like this. It should be a bright yellow color in a 15 ml tube. Now that we have our stock solution prepared, the next thing that we need to prepare is the cells for the assay. So here we're gonna talk about cell preparation. Essentially, you want to plate your cells in a 96 well plate at a density of about 2,000 to 5,000 cells per well. You wanna do this at least 24 hours prior to running your assay and longer if you need to do treatments. And then the most important thing about plating this assay is that you plate the exact same number of cells for each well. This is like one of the most key aspects of getting this correct. So let's talk a little bit about how do you get the exact same number of cells per well. The best way to do this is to actually make a master mix of your cells. So here we'll talk about how to make that master mix. We're going to make some basic assumptions. So the first one is that we are making this for one 96 well plate. So you'll need to scale up or down depending on how many wells you need. We're going to use 4,000 cells per well, but you can use anywhere between 2,000 and 5,000. And we're going to assume 200 microliters of media per well. So to make this, we're going to mix 400,000 cells, counted out previously, into 20 ml of tissue culture media. And we're gonna mix that really, really well, and then use a reservoir and a multi-channel pipette to dispense these cells very evenly into our 96 well plate. This is very important because any change in the number of cells in your MTT will severely mess up your results. So on the last slide, I said that the cell number is really, really important. I wanna just take a minute to talk about why the cell number matters so much in these assays. So let's imagine that this is the results of our assay. And let's imagine that we plated out multiple different numbers of cells. So we started at maybe 1,000, and we go to 5,000, and then 10,000. And knowing what you know about how this reaction works, each of these cell numbers is going to reduce the formazan just a little bit more. And so at the 1,000, you'll have relatively less purple, but at the 10,000, you'll have huge amounts of purple. And so any variation in your cell number is going to change your assay independent of whatever drug or treatment you're actually trying to test. And so that's why it's going to be important to really control for that number of cells. The second part of preparing your cells is of course designing the actual plate and deciding how to seed out your cell conditions. So here we're gonna talk a little bit about the best way to design a plate for three conditions. The first is drugs, the second is gene modulation, and the third is time. 
So let's start by talking about the number of replicates you need. MTTs can be quite finicky, and so it's good to have at least four to eight replicates. I personally prefer to use eight replicates just to make sure I'm getting the best data possible. And so that means that going down my plate, I'm going to have eight sets that are exactly the same thing, which means that in terms of conditions, I really only have 12 columns from which to make conditions because everything going down is going to be a replicate of those conditions. It's also important to think about the controls. And so we need for drugs, we need a zero drug control. We need something that has a lot of drug that's a positive control that should kill all our cells. And we need something where there is no cells or drug, and that is our negative control. And so our first row can be our zero. Our 11th row can be the high drugs, maybe 200 or 1,000, depending on what drug you're using. And then our last row will be nothing at all. And if we actually, from here, choose 1,000 as our high number, then I like to do the scale sort of going down by half. So I go to 500, 200, 100, 50, 20, 10, 5, 2, 1, 0. And this means that you really get a very tight range around that 1 to 50 concentration, which is usually where most drugs are quite potent. If that isn't the case for your drug, you'd want to choose a, an appropriate range for the drug you're using. So now let's talk about what we might expect. So here you can see that at row 12 where there's nothing, we have the lightest purple, and that is according to what we would expect to see. When we move to row 11, you can see that this is where we have a really high concentration of drug, and so we'd still expect most of our cells to be dead, and we'd expect them to have much less reducing capacity. And so again, we'd expect to see a really light purple color here. And so these two rows together are two of our key controls for this assay. The third one is, of course, our first row. And so here we can see that these are all very dark purple because we have left all the cells intact and not treated them with any drug here. And then in between, we have all of our concentrations, and we would expect to see that the cells get lighter and lighter as we move up in terms of drug concentration. So now let's move to talking about our second conditions, what would be gene modulation. So here we have a control condition, we have potentially a knockdown of a gene or an overexpression of a gene, and then we still have to keep our control where there is nothing, no cells or drug or treatment or anything at all. We're going to keep our eight replicates, and then we have those remaining wells to do any other conditions we need to do. And so what you might expect to see here is that your control will, of course, be a dark purple because you haven't done anything with it. And your nothing control will be light. And your knockdown overexpression will be whatever they may be, depending on the modulation. So now we can talk about our third condition, which is time. And this is probably the easiest one to talk about. We'll still have our eight replicates as before. And then we'll have our controls as we needed before. So a negative control, a positive control, a zero drug control, if that is relevant. And we'll have all of our other conditions placed into the other columns as appropriate. And so the thing with time is that you really need to make a separate plate for each time point that you want to assay. Or you need to treat your plate sequentially such that the whole plate will be ready with the appropriate time conditions at one time point. So we'll talk a little more about how to do that in the next slide. However, for this slide, just to clarify, if you wanted to do an assay where you wanted to look at proliferation rates of a cell line over time, you could not do something where you treated it sequentially. You would have to make one plate for every time point you wanted to assay and then assay it at each of those time points. But if you were doing a long-term drug treatment, then you could treat the cells over time and make a plate such that you only assay it once. So let's talk about what sequential treating means here. So let's say that our goal is to do treatments for zero days, two days, four days, six days, and eight days. And it's really important to not forget that day zero because it's going to give you your baseline against which to analyze everything. So we can draw out a timeline and we have, like I said, our day eight, day six, day four, day two, and day zero. And so at eight days out, we're gonna go ahead and treat only those cells that need to be treated for eight days total. Then we're gonna do the same thing six days out, four days out, and two days out. And so basically you have these cells sitting there until they're ready to be treated, and then you just treat them 
right before the amount of time that you need. And then at day zero, you would treat or just keep your day zero cells, and then you would read it out on the exact same day. And that way you get your whole plate in one go without having to do this assay four times. So now that we've gone through all the preparation, let's talk a little bit about how to actually do the assay. The first step is going to be to add your MTT reagent to your cells. So for this step, you're going to make a 1 to 10 mixture of the MTT stock solution that you made initially with your tissue culture media. What that practically means is that you're going to mix 1 ml of your MTT stock solution, so the yellow solution that we had made earlier, to 10 ml of your tissue culture media. And this will take you from a solution that was initially yellow, bright yellow in color, to one that is more orange or orangey pink, because now you have this yellow mixed in with your pink media. You're then going to go ahead and remove the media from your cells. And I like to do this with a little pipette up and down just one time to remove any debris that is already on the cells. And then you can also wash once with PBS and this helps really get rid of any debris or dead cells. You're going to then completely remove your PBS from your cells. And then you're going to use a multi-channel pipette and a reservoir, again, because you want to dispense this solution also evenly, because based on the amount of MTT reagent you add, that is the amount of reduction you're going to get. So you add 110 microliters of the MTT plus media solution that you just made into your cells. And this is, again, the orange solution that you just made. And you want to make sure to dispense it very evenly across your cells. Once you have added that solution to your cells, the next step is to incubate and let the MTT reagent do its work. So for this, we're going to place the plate back into our tissue culture incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for about 4 to 24 hours. I typically aim for 4 hours, but this is something that you could leave overnight if you needed to. And so here you see that we have our cells that we started with. This is just cells with MTT. And what they become after the reduction is these spiky formazan crystals that you see here. And this is the reduced form, and this is the form that will eventually give that purple color that we read out. After our four hours or 24 hours are up, the next step will be to resuspend those formazan crystals to really generate that purple color. And so to do this, we're going to remove very carefully the MTT media solution from the cells. It's important to do this very, very gently because now these crystals are not stuck to the bottom of the plate and so they can get disrupted quite easily. So again, you use a multi-channel pipette, you angle your pipette towards the edge of the well and you just carefully in one step remove the media. Don't use an aspirator or a glass pipette or anything like that because that will be too aggressive for the cells. Then you're going to resuspend the crystals that are remaining in DMSO. I typically like to use about 110 microliters of DMSO and you want to resuspend quite aggressively to make sure that all of the crystals get up into solution and you get an accurate reading. And then just to give it a little more time to really resuspend, you can incubate for another 10 minutes at room temperature on the bench. Some people like to do this on a shaker or like to intermittently resuspend during this time as well. And so essentially you want to do anything you can to get that purple color to develop really evenly in your wells. And then finally, your last step is going to be to actually go and read out the plate. So you take it to a standard plate reader, make sure that you align the wells with the correct orientation on the plate reader, and then you're gonna read out at an absorbance of 570 nanometers. And then once you have that data, we can go ahead and analyze it, which is something we'll cover in the next video. So thanks so much for watching. You can always subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And if you would like to see expanded content, including a written up protocol or get copies of these slides, you can go ahead and visit the website.
at benchbites.com. Um, if you want to see any related content to this, there is a video on the theory behind MTT assays and also a video on analysis of MTT assays. Those are also linked below in the description. Thanks again.